Hi, I'm Rich from Medieval History Buff. Thank you for watching my video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share and comment. This video is called A Year in the Life of Edward VI. What I'm going to do here is look at the reign of Edward through the eyes of Edward himself. He was the long anticipated son and heir of Henry VIII and he was a slightly curious and serious young man. His reign was brief and he didn't live long enough to make anywhere near the same impact on history as other members of the Tudor dynasty. But what he did leave behind was a chronicle of his reign. And here I'm going to try and gain a bit of insight into the reign of this young king and see how his mind worked by looking at the events he documents of the year of 1552 that impacted Edward and his kingdom. It's notable that a large number of entries into his diary are details about events that we would consider fairly throwaway in that they're not particularly important but Edward has noted them and deemed them important enough to keep records of. Examples of this include work that was done in Calais which was the last English held possession in France and would fall during the reign of Edward's successor Mary and he also mentions some administration he had taken care of in Ireland. Now obviously as a king by doing these tasks Edward was simply fulfilling his duty but what is curious is that such a young man deems it worthwhile enough to keep a record of. Now perhaps it was his tutors that were encouraging him to write these things down but I also think it was in Edward's nature to talk about these types of things. Perhaps what was less surprising is that Edward then talks about an embassy he received from the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, who was acting on behalf of his cousin Mary, Edward's half-sister. Charles's mother was Joanna and Mary's mother was Catherine of Aragon. They were sisters which made Charles and Mary cousins. And I've just mentioned that just to clarify why Edward wasn't also Charles's cousin. But Edward makes it quite clear that the ambassador for Charles was forceful in persuading the young king to allow Mary, a devout Catholic, to receive mass. But Edward, being a determined Protestant and a stubborn little so-and-so, point-blank refused. Whether large or small, good or bad, Edward kept a close eye on events in his kingdom. He records Parliament sessions beginning, the arrival of gifts from the French king, and the execution of the Duke of Somerset, his own uncle. Somerset, who was the brother of Edward's mother, Jane Seymour, was removed from power by the ever-scheming Earl of Northumberland, who would eventually meet his own deserved downfall, <clears throat> although not until he had destroyed the lives of his own son, Guilford, and Guilford's wife, Lady Jane Grey. Somerset was not necessarily an innocent man, but Northumberland was truly wicked. On the execution of Edward Seymour, Edward VI notes somewhat coldly the death of his uncle. Here he writes, his head was cut off on Tower Hill between eight and nine o'clock in the morning. It seems Edward had little or no sympathy 
for Seymour. Edward also kept a close eye on European politics and the whereabouts of powerful figures such as the King of France and Charles V. This would have all been actively encouraged by Edward's tutors as part of the learning process as he, as they expected he would do, would one day reach majority and be able to rule for himself. Having a good grasp of continental politics even at this early age would stand him in good stead. So what can be gleaned from looking at Edward's writings is the fact that there are familiar Tudor characteristics in him. But to me he's not so much like his father as he is his grandfather, Henry the Seventh. I believe Edward would have been a financially prudent type of king. He kept track of debts that were owed to him and he was wary of keeping an eye on his revenues. <clears throat> As I have just mentioned, there is also an itiness in his personality. His recording of Seymour's death is entirely emotionless. Had he lived longer, he would have made a competent and respected king. He was firm with foreign ambassadors, and not one to shirk away from stamping his authority, young as he was. When he realised that he was not going to recover from his final illness the following year in 1553, he was resolute in not allowing Mary the throne. <clears throat> he was a young man who knew what he wanted. Perhaps that last statement is perhaps where we can see a touch of Henry VIII in young Edward. He is not charismatic like Henry VIII, but he knew his own mind, and when he wanted something, he was determined to get it. His reign, though, would not have been anywhere near as flamboyant as Henry VIII, so. And as I have mentioned, I believe he would have been a serious and cold type, type of king. And history could have been quite different had he lived longer. <clears throat>